Hey everyone, as promised, I wanted to make a video on how I use Capture One. Now, I travel a lot and I run around and I do different shoots in different locations, so that means the files I take on my camera and my archive is gonna be a little bit all over the place. So how do I solve this? I use Capture One for its superior raw processing capabilities, but I've also really been working with the brand for several years, so I wanted to run you through it. Now, this isn't a how to use Capture One video, it's a how I use Capture One video. At CaptureOne.com, they have a Capture One kind of um, school. You can go through, and that's actually how I learned to use the software. You can go through, they have excellent videos on each feature of Capture One. So the first thing, I have a traveling hard drive and I have a project that I wanna use as a sample to show you um, how I keep my files. So here on this drive is a folder called 18-1037 Mongolian Connection Shoot. It has a date, what the shoot is, and a reference number, which can be whatever it is. I have a system that I use for myself, but that's immaterial to what I'm trying to show you guys. So in here, there's usually for sure three folders, often more. The first one is my capture folder. That one contains all the raw files that I photographed during an entire shoot. When I tether, I set up Capture One to put the files directly from the camera into that capture folder and you can set that up in the software. And again, for tethering, I'm not gonna cover it, but go to the videos on the Capture One website. They're fantastic for that. The next folder I have is called TIFF and I'm gonna run you through what that folder is and then I'll show you also what my output folder is. The behind the scenes folder, I'm not gonna go into too much. It's just on this shoot, there were people taking behind the scenes during the shoot. I asked them to send them to me and I keep them all together in that behind the scenes folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and open Capture 112, but everything I'm gonna show you today is applicable also to other versions of Capture One. Now, I use, if you look up here, I've named the session in this case, a Capture One demonstration. I use sessions rather than catalog because I want to be able to just point Capture One to a folder and have it load in all my presets and all the images like I'm gonna do right now. And I'm gonna show you, tell you what the difference is between that and uh, catalog. So I've got my, here is my file system, system folders. I've got my FKP Travel, Felix Kunz Photography. It's a two terabyte drive, Felix Kunz Photography Travel. It has that folder on it that we looked at in the Finder earlier. I'm gonna open that and I'm gonna click on the capture folder and capture one is gonna load in the entire capture folder. I'm gonna just clear my selection here and I'm gonna go through it. So that's all 393 images I shot for this shoot by pointing my um, Capture One to this folder. In a catalog, it works a little bit differently where Capture One tries to make a whole library for you. I think Lightroom has that option as well. I don't like to use that because I wanna have complete flexibility with moving my files around. Everything I need is on this drive. If I wanted to go to another computer that has Capture One installed, I would just need to do the same thing. I plug in the drive, and I tell it to um, read that folder and all the presets are in there. So what Capture One actually does, let's go back to the Finder, is in this Capture folder, there's a folder at the very top called Capture One, very simple, and that contains all the adjustments in that shoot. So when Capture One loads the raw files, it'll also load all of these little files with it that tell it what the adjustments are and how the image is supposed to look. That means from now till the end of time, Capture One will be able to go to that folder. I don't have to have stuff in different sections like I would if I had a library or have a drive go corrupt and lose all of my image adjustments. So that's um, why I use sessions and I would recommend it for anyone who follows my work and tries to kind of learn how I do these things. Um, when I make um, my selects, it's very easy. You have your browser tab on the right here, you have your image in the middle, and you have your adjustments tab on the left. So I'm gonna, you can move these around. You can get rid of and add drives back in. You can make this smaller. I'll go through very quickly usually and use the number keys to give selects. It's very simple, it's covered on their website as well. But in this case, I'm gonna go to my three stars because that's gonna show me my selected images and there's nine of them here, very simple. These are what's gonna go to the retoucher for retouching, 
And um, as you can see over here, if you click on the file name, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. As I click on the file name, I've made notes, for example, extend directly in the file name. So when I export this, this is going to be in the file name of the file. Extend floor, backdrop, and baseboard. Retouch all skin. His less so than the girl's. Can you try? Yeah, so I've got various retouching notes on all of these images. That's what I do. It keeps my workflow super easy. So I make my selects, and then I give these images um, kind of names in the file name that tell the retoucher what needs to be done on the images. It also would be good if you retouch your own work to have reminders for yourself of what you need to do for the images. Um, I'm just going to get rid of the adjustment tab over here. Um, you can see, and by the way, that shortcut for that is Command T on the Mac. I don't know what it is on Windows. For this, I have to extend the floor because I'm missing a little bit of that floor that I've put down on the right and on the left, and he has to extend the backdrops. That's pretty simple. So when I export this, I'm going to try to give the retoucher a plate. A plate is an image that a retoucher uses to bring or composite a part of the image back in. So for example, when I shoot a lot of stuff that I need composited on backdrops, I'll send an empty image with no subjects on it of just the backdrop. So we have a clean um, layer with which we can composite the images together should we need to extend the backdrop, in this case the floor. And I actually wasn't that good in this shoot, and I didn't shoot the um, plate, a clean plate, but I have images where less of the floor is covered by the subjects. So that's what I send in as a plate, and I'll show you that, guys show you that in a minute. Um, just really quickly for this, um, I wanted to show you a little thing that I do for group pictures. In the original image, if you let me show you the original image, I'm going to right click here, clone variant, and make a copy. And I'm going to hit Command R to reset this image to what I shot it as. And I'm actually pretty happy with the lighting on this. I'm going to go to my um, my lens, it's called the lens tab, I call it the composition tab. And what I did, let me get rid of the browser here for a second, so you can see this. On the little distortion panel over here, I've gone ahead and distorted it as much as Capture One will allow me. And what that does is it creates a kind of fake fisheye effect. And it's because the people in the middle of that frame, they felt to me a little bit squashed together. So this just helps to bring them out a little bit and bring the edges in a little bit. There's a lot at the edges and, uh, sorry, there's not a lot at the edges, but a lot at the middle. So I wanted to give them a little bit more prominence. It's just a little thing I did. And if you have a look at the, um, the exposure panel here, you'll see in this image, if you look up here, I actually didn't make all that many adjustments. The main thing I did is a crop, that distortion thing, and I adjusted my white balance. You can see that right here on the left. If I tab between them, you'll see I changed my white balance because I was already happy with the lighting. One of the things that is in the retouching notes for this image is to even out the exposure on every person in the shot. It's almost impossible, and I, you know, I'm in a studio like we all are where we don't have infinite space, to get exposure exactly the same on each person. And even if you did, people's skin tones give you a different perception. So I tried to correct for that in retouching. You know, they were stacked in front and behind in all sorts of ways. So that's kind of one of my retouching notes. So then now I've got 10 images because I duplicated this one. So instead of deleting this one, the easiest way for me, because I've still got my, um, my search here at three stars or higher, I'm just going to give the image that I don't want anymore, this additional version, two stars. Now also, why is this image so cropped in already? That's my vision for the final image, and I'm not going to send, in this case, the whole wide image to the retoucher, because that's just extra work if I'm then going to crop it back in anyway. This crop, it makes it super easy for the retoucher, him or her, to bring just that little bit more backdrop where it's needed to extend the floor just a little bit instead of having to build a whole bunch of backdrop when I'm just going to crop it back in anyway. So I've got my nine files over here. I'm going to just hit Command A to select them all. And then I'm going to go to my Export tab. And it has these process recipes. And I'm going to select Full Res TIFF sRGB. You have to check when you start Capture One, you might have to build your own recipes for these kind of things. I use TIFF because that's what I've always used, and I feel like it changes a little bit less than 
the Photoshop PSD format does over time. So I'm kind of future-proofing myself for files that I shot 10 years ago, they will still load. Um, I mean, the same is true for PSDs, but you know what I mean. Um, and I'll put them, their output location, as you can probably already guess, in my project folder on this drive in the folder called TIFF. So I already did that, and you see the file name has all of the notes on it, so I can send that easily to the retoucher. I also gave a floor plate, like I showed earlier, for that image where the floor needs to be extended, and that's in my TIFF folder as well, labeled as a plate for the retoucher. So I set that as the output folder, and then I would click process, it would put it in that folder. I've already done this for this project, so I don't need to do it again. The other thing I do, I will often send the retoucher, if you have them all selected, and you right click over here in the browser on one of the images, and click export originals. What that's gonna do, and I put that in a raw folder probably underneath the TIFF file, um, what that's gonna do is put the raw files and it's gonna include those little sidecar adjustments, sidebar files that I showed you at the beginning, in that folder where you're exporting the raw files. So a retoucher that's familiar with Capture One and has access to it can just load that whole folder in with the adjustments you have. So let's say there's a shadow he needs to recover and can't get it from the file that I sent, the TIFF that I sent, he or she could get it and bring it up in, in Capture One, bring that raw file in, and then use that to kind of recover details. It's very rare that we need to actually do that, but I like to send the raw files just in case so the retoucher doesn't have to ask for them. So that will all go into that TIFF folder. Then I take that whole TIFF folder, the entire TIFF folder can just go to the retoucher. I send mine on Dropbox, use whatever you want. And um, he has the notes, he has the raw files, he has the plates. Everything's right there, can just do the retouch and um, that makes it easy for them. Then when the files come back, I load the retouched files back into the TIFF folder. I don't need the raw files anymore. That's actually where I'm at on this. And then I open them up in Photoshop, I finish them off. Now, you can do a lot of kind of layering stuff, things that, um, you know, brushing and masking in the latest versions of Capture One. They're great, but it's not part of my workflow yet. But if you want to kind of do as much as you can in Capture One, then the website, captureone.com, they have a great learning academy for all those kind of functions of Capture One. I would bring mine into Photoshop, finish them off, any little things I see, any color, final color adjustments, and then the final images I will output as um, a JPEG from Photoshop directly and put that in the output folder. In the output folder, I'm gonna put anything that's gonna go to the client or anything that I would put on social media, anything that has gone out from me. So they're not gonna get the rough TIFF files with all the edits on it, but they are gonna get the, um, you know, the JPEGs that I put out. This is easy because it's the smallest version. Like it's, they're still large JPEGs, but it's not the TIFF files, which can be really, really large. And I have those for each project in one place, easy to find put them on my phone, I can put them onto my online library, send them to clients super easily, um, etc. So if I then wanted to go, I can now move this whole folder, everything can go onto my archive drive, I can just load it back in super easy. That's kind of the file structure that's worked really well for me. Feel free to adopt this to what you want and again if you have other questions regarding Capture One, their website is the best for that kind of thing. The reason I use Capture One is because when I started working as an assistant and any big set I was on, the Digitech, the person who was responsible for getting the files from the camera into the computer was always using Capture One. And I noticed the files were just looking beautiful. So I approached Capture One, I don't know, six years ago when um, I was first running around in New York City and I asked, can we teach um, Capture One to a broader audience because yes, it's a pro tool, but I wanna bring it to kind of photographers, high street photographers, people who are shooting all over the world every single day. And that um, has been something that I've been doing consistently for years and years and years. And um, it's because I think raw files just look so much better in Capture One. If you wanna try it, there is a free trial. I don't think you need to even enter your credit card details at captureone.com gives you 30 days and I just want you to have a look. Compare a file that you might think, eh, it's a little bit unrescuable or even an image that you love that you use in your other raw processing engine 
try it out in Capture One, see the difference and you'll see the way it handles shadows, the way it handles kind of, you know, all those technical um, aspects of that someone else does far better than I do. They make it easy for me to make beautiful images. They now have all these preset styles and things which I do use, but not as much as um, I probably could or should. And um, I think it's, I'm passionate about helping photographers become better. Um, we've got our, you know, the lighting series is my online video that um, shows lighting and Capture One is kind of that last piece of the puzzle that I use to make my images really sing and I hope you do the same.